download that's available all over the world. But this is my, uh, at least my two cents worth, to say that I think we should offer these people a chance to look into the Quran for themselves and see what does it say. The second thing, I think, is for us to sit with anybody who would like to know something and just talk about the Quran and what we might know about it. Now, we've got several pages on our internet website about the Quran that you can go and read it. First thing is, we'd start out by telling people Quran is not a book. Although we write it down on paper, and that's the thing that they've been kicking around, but the actual Quran itself is being preserved by Allah in the hearts and minds and memories of 1.5 billion human beings today because every Muslim has memorized at least some portion of the Quran. There's no Muslim alive at least who doesn't know the that, that doesn't know the first line in Surah Fatiha, which is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We say that all the time, every day. Okay, and as far as Fatiha, almost every Muslim, even the children, have memorized that, and several other surahs as well, chapters of Quran. And then on top of that, we have somewhere between ten and twenty million human beings. The majority of who are not Arab, yet they have memorized the Arabic text of the Quran cover to cover. Every page, every word, every sentence. They've memorized all of it. That's between 10 and 20 million human beings. My God, isn't that enough to show people that there's some interest in this book? You should look at it. How many people have memorized the Bible? How many people memorized the Old Testament? Or even the New Testament? or even one book out of the Bible, or even one chapter out of the Bible, and now listen close, how many have memorized anything out of the Bible in the original language? And know what it means. Huh? And we're talking about 10 to 20 million human beings walking on this planet and memorize the entire Quran. So quite naturally, if we have this kind of attachment, we're willing to spend two or three years to memorize it. Naturally, we're going to be very defensive about it. And those who play these kinds of games, they know that. And I feel like Muslims are walking into a bit of a trap by, uh, you know, overreacting. And I didn't say that we should do something, yes. But what I'm saying we should do is say, okay, this is disgusting, it's dishonorable, and it shows that you are not a very compassionate individual and you're ignorant, you're not knowledgeable. This is what we should tell these people. But I don't think we need to burn a lot of stuff. I don't, need, I don't think we need to go out here and become uh, confrontational to the extent that we're going to hurt anyone because I think these people need to know the truth. And I'm going to share with you an idea. I like to always go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah tells us in the Quran that they plot and he plots. They plan and he plans. He asks us, who's the best of planners? And you know it's Allah. And he tells us he's the one who's preserving this Quran. Okay? Now we look to the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. He never held a Quran in his life. How could he? He didn't. <laughs> they didn't have any. They didn't make books of the Quran back in his day. Time, in his day. They didn't do that. They memorized it. Now they wrote it down, yeah. But they wrote it down on rocks and leaves and they wrote it down on animal skins, things like that. But they didn't really compile it as a book until later. And even then, the books, when they were compiled, weren't based on the writings. They were based on the memories of the people. And the people would recite while the person compiled these things to make sure they didn't make any mistakes. The same thing that they did when Uthman came along. That when he, uh, he was asked by the companions at that stage to uh, basically codify it, meaning put it all down in, in what will be an official or accepted text format. So he asked everybody that had anything that they'd done on their own to bring it on in, and let's destroy that. After we go over and make sure that we get everything just letter perfect. And that's what he did. He had every, everybody who could mem had memorized Quran could sit there and recite, and himself included, by the way, he was one of those, and recite and recite and recite and recite and put it all back down 
and then send those books out around the world. And those books, by the way, they were only about a, a handful, maybe 8, 10, 12, something like that. But do you know what? Three of those still exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tashkent, Uzbekistan. That's the hometown, by the way, of Imam Zoom. Both of them lived right there. Tashkent, Uzbekistan. There's a museum. A friend of mine from there told me he'd been in that museum and he'd seen that same Quran which was there with Uthman uh, 1400 years ago. Huh? And then uh, when I was in uh, Istanbul, Turkey, at the Top Copy Museum, that's where they have another, just like it, okay, from Uthman's time. And the third one is in England in a museum there. Now, if you understand that these are exactly the same that's being re uh, recited around the world today, there's no difference then you should realize that Allah is taking care of this. Now, we shouldn't allow people to just run over us. No, we need to stand up and say what's right. But at the same time, we got to find the balance because we're supposed to be the Omitin Wachitin, which means the middle path, the people of the middle road. We, do, we are not extreme this way or extreme that way. We're not going to lay down and let people just bowl over us, but at the same time, we're not going to go extreme and, and do exactly what some of these people want you to do. You come back harsher, they'll come back harsher, and you're standing there with a stick, and they'll come back at you with a gun, and you pick up a bigger stick, and they pick up a bomb and blow you away. And then they'll say, well, we're justified because he picked up a big stick, and so we had to blow him up. And I think this is exactly what some people are looking for from us. I might be wrong. And I'm, I'm looking forward to getting some input back from you folks now. You've heard my opinion. You've heard what I have to say about this. And if you want to go online and read about this, you can go to MSNBC, their news thing for June the 4th. Look it up for yourself and see. Pentagon is admitting uh, the details of what they're calling, quote-unquote, mishandling of the Quran. But, uh, you know, you can read the subtitle. It says the detainees... This means the people that are being locked up, incarcerated, the prisoners, copies of the holy book are being kicked and urinated on, peed on, by the guards. The people supposed to be guarding them, detaining them, are doing this. Of course, they, they'll say they're doing it to try to get them to confess or they need to do this to break their spirit and things like that. But my question is, what about the people that they have been doing that to here in this country? And I've already mentioned some cases uh, referred to here uh, down in Texas, but I've seen it in other pr prisons and heard about what happened in federal units, which the federal government is not going to disclose and would not like me to discuss. But I will tell you a general statement without mentioning where it happened. But an inmate was refused access to his Quran and he went crazy and did all kinds of things until they gave it to him and when he got it it had been soaked in the fat of the pig okay called lard they melted lard and soaked it in there and then gave it to him when he found out what it was he f wanted to find out who had done it when he finally got a chance to find out who did it the guy told him so what I did it what are you going to do about it and the inmate then took it on himself to get a hold of a knife somehow and he killed that person and he tried to kill some of the other people there and he had told his friends he was going out for jihad in there in the prison and that is what he meant by what he was saying and this is wrong by the way and I could give you a, a number of reasons why but the worst thing was he did kill some people there and he uh, injured others very seriously and now he has spent the entire rest of his life in a lockdown situation which he will never get out of. Um, of course you might say, well, he was standing up for Allah, he's standing up for the Quran, and I'm sure that's what he thought as well. But you got to remember this was an English translation, and you got to remember that uh, there, there was no judge, uh, Islamic judge in the matter. He was taking this into his own hands. And when you start talking about killing people, this is not something a Muslim is allowed to do just on his own, go out here and arbitrarily say, well, I, this guy needs to die and that guy needs to die. That is not in Islam to do that. So those are some of the points that I thought we should mention about that. Now, for more about this subject in general, about the Quran, what I want you to do is go to our website, islamtomorrow.com slash Quran. Spell it Q-U-R-A-N. 
to get a free Quran, go to islamtomorrow.com slash free, F-R-E-E, and you'll see along with it you can get a, um, the full set of Bukhari, Muslim, the Muat of Imam Malik, the Fiqh Sunnah of Sayyid Sabik and others. All of it's free right there on wine. So please take advantage of this now and consider what I've said. Then write to me and let me know what's your opinion on this thing. Ask Islam. A-S-K-I-S-L-A-M.